Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jays. The Jays might have a new pitcher taking the five slot. You are Locked On Blue Jays, your daily Toronto Blue Jays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jays. Thank you for making Locked On Blue Jays your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. And oh boy, we got some Toronto Blue Jays news. Welcome back to Locked On. I'm your host, Braden Wasco, co-hosted by Carter First. Our Twitters, Braden 5 Wasco, Carter First 2. We are... Maybe the world's biggest Blue Jays fans hosting this podcast, having a great time with you guys, other fans. It's the best place to be for all your news. You can check us out on Instagram, TikTok, wherever else, Locked on Blue Jays. And of course, hit that subscribe button. We know a lot of you guys watch and don't subscribe. So please give that uh, subscribe button a hit for us, the like button, leave us a comment, whatever you guys think. Uh, We love hearing from you guys as uh, we will continue to respond to you guys if they're good, bad, if they're I hate the Jays. I love the Jays. We even got one that said I'm a Bruins fan. I don't know what that guy's doing, but all right. Um, Carter, Yariel Rodriguez is making his way to the big leagues. How pumped up does this make you? Yeah, I'm pretty fired up. Uh, just getting uh, a Yariel Rodriguez, a firearm, an electric arm that has been in AAA so far this season. A guy that uh, hasn't pitched a ton. And uh, so far, unfortunately, you haven't gotten what you've been looking for from Baden Francis. Alec Manoa is supposed to be on his way back. So it, it's looking like Yariel Rodriguez is going to be given the opportunity to make that fifth starting rotation spot and give that role to him. I'm fired up for it. I like the upside here. Uh, Yariel Rodriguez has looked good so far in Buffalo, what he's done there. Uh, a good slider on Rodriguez. So I'm excited for his uh, first major league start. I, I don't know if it's going to be this weekend. It would be interesting against a Rockies team that doesn't really have the greatest lineup. So I think it probably would be a good time to throw him in. And he would have a slated start in that fifth rotation spot coming up if they don't want to go to Bowden. So I'm pretty fired up. It's looking like a starting rotation spot, but who knows? Maybe we even throw him in this bullpen. But we are getting some reinforcements back, hopefully this weekend. So I think this, I think you're right. I think this should be a move for the starting pitching. Yeah, and and that's what it's looking like. It, it, of course, nothing's been said that, of course, he's going to take over that fifth, ro- or fifth uh, rotation spot. But uh, with, you know, with some expert analysis, pretty much just me looking at how bad Baden, Bowden Francis started this season. Sadly, uh, it looks like Yariel will take that spot. That's not confirmed. Nothing has been 100% guaranteed yet. But uh, I put your money on him starting uh, that game instead of Bowden. Now, of course, Yariel Rodriguez, the upside is amazing. I don't know if Bowden has had enough time in a major league level quite yet to solidify himself. So I think if with him struggling... That's a situation where, okay, this guy's pitched amazing in AAA. Let's give him a shot. This is why we brought him in here. Uh, and and I feel bad for Bowden and sort of dog, dogging him a little bit. But his ERA right now is a 12.92. So not much room for me to, you know, put him in my saving graces here. So uh, at the end of the day, we're getting Yariel Rodriguez. Bowden will go back to the bullpen. I'm really not upset about this. I think you can still utilize both guys in situations. Carter, do you are you sort of on board with me where this will be a starting rotation role, or do you think that he might end up coming in and, and starting in the bullpen? I mean, based off uh, just the Bowden start so far, again, he hasn't had a ton of major league experience, but hasn't looked too good so far in his starting rotation spot. And then when you look at how, what he did last year with a sub two ERA, looking electric out of the bullpen, and even in his starts this year, he may not be giving up a lot of runs, but the strikeouts are there. Even in, all, in both of his outings, he's had strikeouts. I think he had seven in his first one, and it was five or six in the second one. So he is getting these punch outs, and that is huge out of the bullpen. Obviously, he had a lot of success out of there. And, uh, yeah, I think uh, it's the best-case scenario. You get Yario Rodriguez, you get a little bit of upside in there. You get Bowden Francis, who can be a long reliever, easily out of the bullpen, is worked up to be a starter. You get him in that lineup, and then your five starters, if Rodriguez can be efficient like he was in Buffalo, then uh, you got Yario Rodriguez as your five, Kikuchi, I guess, as your four, technically. Sort of, yeah. Kind of insane. Then you got Chris Bassett at three, Brios at two, and Gosman at one. That's a pretty good starting pitching rotation, if you ask me. And just based off of 
Yariel Rodriguez's uh, outings in Buffalo, like you said, it's kind of been worked up to be a starter, in my opinion. Because first start, he yeah. went two and a third innings. The second start, he went four innings. So in totality, Yariel Yari Rodriguez in Buffalo went six and a third innings with only one hit given up, 10 Ks and three walks. <laughs> so just based off his stat line and how he's built up, I think he will be in this starting rotation. And everything we've seen based off the World Baseball Classic in 2022, his outings in Japan, his outings for the Toronto Blue Jays, everything's looking pretty good. So it's definitely something to be excited about. I think, yeah, the starting rotation, and it just helps our bullpen out too, right? You get Jordan Romano coming back, Eric Swanson, then you got Don Francis in there. Someone's going to have to be kicked out, unfortunately. There's not, unfortunately, enough spots for all these guys. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what the corresponding move is with Yariel Rodriguez. I'm assuming Paulo Espinal is probably gone. Maybe Mitch White gets sent down, but again, he has no options, so he'd have to be DFA'd. Nate Pearson's another guy, not a good pitching out effort so far. I don't even know if, if he's allowed to run, but again, he has options and his bullpen is really deep. So he might be one of the guys you send down first. Yeah, it's it's a tough look. I don't know where every piece fits in because we have a lot of good guys. And a guys, uh, some guys I think just haven't got uh, you know into their stride yet. It's pretty early in the season to be making this move. But, you know, ballsy on the Blue Jays uh, management team bringing him up. I, I like it. Because uh, we we were debating on when we'd see Ariel Rodriguez earlier when we were talking in the uh, spring training if when would be his time of coming up, but it looks like it's sooner rather than later. It's it's this weekend, and which is exciting. It you know for a weekend game too to bring in this guy that's highly touted that that we've been talking about for you know a couple months now. It's it's exciting. I'm I'm very excited to watch this game. And you know what? It's a great weekend here as well because we get back on the golf course on Sunday. So uh, there's there's a lot to, a lot to look forward to for us. Uh, Carter, one thing I did want to mention. Um, I don't know if I went uh, Babe Schneider um, here or not, but if he inspired something. But the mustache is back. Um, yeah, that's what you – I uh, I got up from a nap today, and, and uh, I just got a little smug look from uh, Braden. He's like – Babe Schneider's back. We're going with the Muzzy. I'm like, okay, I guess uh, a little bit of inspired, uh, inspiredness from here from David Schneider on Braden, but uh, hopefully <laughs> some of his baseball aspect can rub off on you uh, this season for slow pitch because uh, you're going to need a little bit of help this season compared to what you did last season for the team. Hey, I'm just saying, best batting average on the team. My fielding was something to be desired. I will admit that it was, you know, I had the yips. I had the yips this season as shortstop, but I'll come back this season. I'm going to be throwing dots over there. It's not even going to be a problem. I'm excited. Uh, it's summer. We're baseball's fully back. The Blue Jays finally showed a pulse in the past couple of games. So I'm getting more into it. I'm, I'm involved. I'm Every day is me scrolling on Twitter, hoping to see some Blue Jays news. And today it happened to pay off. Carter, I want to go over everybody's stats for our starters because some of the stats are deceiving you know because right now you could have one bad start and it skews the numbers pretty aggressively um so i want to get into those here i want to get your reaction but then when we come back i do want to get into some of the players statistics as well the hitters because some of them are very very interesting and honestly they don't look very good um but for the pitchers let's start out with the man who's been putting this team on his back Jose Barrios. Pretty much, I want to give you guys the ERAs. It, it tells the whole story. I don't need to go into how many Ks they have, how many blah, blah, blah. Let's just start with the ERAs. We've watched a ton of games. We know how these guys have been playing. Jose Barrios, a 1.45 ERA. Electric stuff from this guy. I am so excited to watch him pitch against this garbage Colorado Rockies team. Well, imagine we see a complete game uh, from Jose Barrios. I'm not going to say uh, anything else because hopefully it will happen. But uh, yeah, I mean, Jose Barrios has been exactly what you're looking for. A guy that, like I, I've always said, probably could be on ace on any other team. A, lot, a little bit of traction I've seen on Twitter, actually. Uh, people throwing some flyers on him for Cy Young. And I, I, I don't hate it. I mean, maybe a little Toronto Blue Jays bias, but you look at that ERA. You look at his innings pitch, the quality starts, everything he's given you, the stuff he has. This guy's electric, and he's been electric for the Toronto Blue Jays every single year other than 2022. So a guy that is very reliable, a guy that's huge for this team, especially when you have Kevin Gosman injured at the start of the year. You have Chris Bassett, who maybe didn't make the best two starts uh, his first two games, and then Bowden Francis with his struggles and that fifth rotation spot being completely up in the air. 
definitely nice to have Jose Brios in your corner on your side, locked up for a long time and being consistent and productive for the Toronto Blue Jays. I don't want to say anything. Is the opening day curse gone? Did he break it? Did Jose Brios break the opening day curse? It might just be. We might have to wait and see because we, you know, it's we too early, it's too early to say anything now. It's only game three. A lot of things can go right, but a lot of things can also go wrong. So I don't know. I'm not going to jump on that boat yet. Okay. Okay. But, I'll uh, let you off the hook. Th- things are looking okay so far. Hopefully Barrios can uh, continue his torrid pace, hopefully against the Rockies. So this lineup, we'll get into this after, but it's not looking too good over there for the Colorado Rockies. A three and 10 start for the season can yeah. kind of outlier that a little bit. And, anyway, going down the list, the rest of them. You say Kikuchi. You say Kikuchi. 2.3 ERA. Another man that goes out there and deals. We knew, me and you, have been so high on Kikuchi for the past, like, what, two and a half seasons now? That I'm pretty excited. Every time he's on the mound, I want to watch that game because, yeah, you know what? He might give up some hits. He might walk some guys. But, man, does he strike out a lot of guys. He gets a lot of swing and miss. So he's a fun guy to watch. If you need to go down and watch a Jays game to catch a series and you're debating on which series you want to go to, go to a series that you say Kikuchi is pitching in because it is fun to watch. Next, the hound on the mound, Chris Bassett. Not, you know, he had a rough start, but he's starting to look better. 506 ERA. Not necessarily what you want to see from him, but again, rough, rough start to the season. And now he's bouncing back. So I think he's going to be fine again. I don't think you have to worry about this pitching staff. Um, but whatever, the numbers might lie to you on this one a little bit. Yeah, I don't remember what the exact line was for Chris Bassett last season, but I know when he made his Toronto debut, it probably couldn't have gone worse. I don't know if he made it out of the first inning. I know his ERA was like 50 after that first start. So like you said, a bad start early on could definitely skew the numbers. But uh, yeah, Chris Bassett, a guy that usually starts a little bit slower, usually a guy that uh, takes spring training to ramp up and even a little bit of the regular season to ramp up as well. But you're definitely going to take that when you're getting Chris Bassett being at his best in his prime in the, the middle third to the end of the season. So you're, you're going to be pretty excited about that. Uh, Chris Bassett, again, another guy that you can rely on, one of the best third pitchers in the league, in my opinion, a guy that has a million pitches, eight to, to be more accurate, to say the least, but a guy that's always keeping you on edge. You never know what this guy's going to throw. Uh, clearly a very good team guy. I've heard nothing about, but good things. Uh, just statements from the team, John Schneider, obviously. So Chris Bassett, another great guy to have in your corner. And that's one thing about the Toronto Blue Jays right now that I love so much about this team is that there's no there's no locker room cancer on this team. And there hasn't been for a while. And I think that's a pretty good thing for the Toronto Blue Jays. I think they tried to put one of those back in there in at the home opener. That's what I saw. I'm not saying anything else. I saw him in the lineup. Alec Manoa was in the lineup. Get that guy as far away from the diamond as possible. I don't want to see him near it. I, I can't tell if people like him or not because uh, obviously when uh, the players go into the media, they're not going to openly crap on Alec Manoa because you are not as make any sense. There's just going to be storylines after that, whatever. But it seems like people are saying a lot of nice things about him. It seems like people are always talking to him in the dugout. So I, I don't know what's uh, what's going on there. That, that would be the closest thing to a locker room cancer for sure, though, on the Toronto Blue team. I just don't want any of the bad to rub off on all the good. Well, I mean, in, 20, in 2022, if Alec Manoa was with Jose Barrios and Yusei Kikuchi with that uh, – revival of his career that might have helped him out we might have had Alec Manoa actually pitching some innings for this Toronto Blue Jays team but in to give Alec Manoa I guess a little bit of respect in 2022 he really held it down for us because we would have been horrible if yeah. we didn't have Alec Manoa with Jose Brios and Yusei Kikuchi pitching the way they were yeah no and you know what if we do give him a hard time but it's a little bit it is it is a little bit well deserved it's been a hard year and a bit here he has not looked good at all and don't get me wrong, there's always the possibility that he bounces back and finds his stuff. But so far, it's not looking like that's hum- happening anytime soon. If we're going to live in the past as well, like I'm going back to 2015, I'm going back to 2021, I'm not going back to 2022. Alec Manoa, great performance, but that's definitely not what I'm uh, yeah. doing my past Blue Jays time back to. I think that's for right. sure it'd be the 2015, but that 2021, that offense was so electric. Hopefully we we have seen a little get, get a little bit better, maybe some signs, but uh, we'll see if they can pick it up against this uh, Colorado Rockies team that that uh, doesn't have the greatest pitching either. No. But uh, saying that, we'll get into some more pitching stats. Maybe uh, we have some reinforcements coming in for this bullpen, hopefully this weekend. So it's going to be a lot of interesting decisions for John Schneider and company to make on how this bullpen is going to be constructed for the future. So we'll get into all that after this. 
Today's episode is sponsored by Ibotta. Ibotta is a free app that gives you the most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies to toys. So you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. The average Ibotta user earns $145 per year. That could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip, buy that flight you've been eyeing, that Blue Jays game you've been dying to go to, or that fancy dinner you've been craving. Join the over five or sorry, 50 million servers to earn cash back every time you shop from over 2,700 brands and retailers, including Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta and using the code LOCKEDONMLB when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back and use code LOCKEDONMLB. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play Store or App Store and use code LOCKEDONMLB. Big difference between five and fifty, Carter. Yeah, I mean that's only forty-five million more. I mean, if you're going to five million, but yeah, I mean, uh, fifty million definitely giving you a few options uh, and uh, places you could go to try uh, Ibotta. Obviously, a great tool to use if you're everyone's shopping anyway. So you might as well get uh, some more money on top of your spending. Might as well. You know what? There's two guys I didn't get into uh, for the pitching stats or the ERAs, which I'll go through quick here. Kevin Gosman, 9.53. Not good. He had a bad outing last game. Don't read too much more to that. Throw that out the window. We don't need to talk about it. All right. Next, Bowden Francis. This is why Yariel Rodriguez is getting called up. He's at a 12.96, and we haven't seen anything amazing from him as a starter. So, yeah, he might get thrown back into the bullpen. Carter, the one thing, before we get into just the overall bullpen statistics, I wanted to get into some statistics for the entire team, how the team is looking overall compared to the rest of the teams in the MLB. Um, we have runs per game. Blue just sitting at 3.6. That's 23rd in the league. Not great. Not good. Hits per game, 6.9. 26th in the league. That about that about sums up. That's about right. I'm surprised that 6.9 is that low in the league. I'm surprised that I know it's early in the season. I guess pitchers are getting worked up and everything, but uh, I know six, like seven hits isn't good per game, but I mean, for 26 in the league, I don't know. It seems uh, a little bit uh, low for me. I thought it'd be more middle pack. Fair enough. I sort of agree with you. Yeah. It, it, it seemed like a weird number for me. I could have understood if it was a little bit lower and I mean, I assume five, like a five hits, I think 26, but seven, I don't know. What's uh what do you know what the median is or you just got the Blue Jays stats? There? No, I just got the Blue Jays ones. I didn't go. I didn't go full. You know, I, I'm an eye test guy. I don't even like doing analytics as it is, but a lot of people like to know. So I'm and trying the to only know. the only team in the MLB that matters anyway is the Toronto Blue Jays. So the rest of them are just numbers. And it's, right. it's all Toronto Blue Jays baseball here. So that's right. Average twelve point two or uh, two point two twelve. Jesus, uh, that's yeah, 22. a two a two average or zero point zero two on, average. You're doing it back to me so. right now. You're doing it back to me. <laughs> Uh, slugging, uh, 344, 23rd in the league, OPS 652, 22nd in the league. Home runs, we have 11 home runs this season. We're 18th in the league in those. So uh, that's the best offensive category for the Toronto Blue Jays, 18th. We're getting excited yeah. about 18th now in the league. Sure. I mean, I you got to be excited I, about something, right? It is, it is getting better. Like in this Mariners series, it was better. I think, uh, like over the first 10 games, this offense was horrible, and that's where you're getting all these stats from. Yeah, it's it's got to be better. I've said it multiple times on this podcast. You have four guys sitting over two hundred. That's not going to play ever, but especially when one of them is IKF. I mean, like, it's, <laughs> it's uh, you need some offense from this team. Uh, the, the hitting, you're, you're going to need to score runs. This is such a good pitching staff that they're not going to need a lot of runs, but you do need runs to win baseball games. So, uh, offensive numbers, especially from guys like Kirk from Varsho, these guys have been struggling mightily to start the season. The best two hitters on the team so far. Maybe a Kevin Biggio can be thrown in there, but it's been the two guys we picked up this offseason. It's been Justin Turner and IKF. So good thing that Ross signed somebody this offseason, or we might have been dead last in the league in most of these offensive categories. The one I wanted to bring up here, stolen bases. We have five. Where do you think that ranks? I'm surprised we even have five. I think maybe Kiermaier has three of those, but I feel like that's probably like... And Kiermaier's only days. been on base one time, so... <laughs> That's the that's the problem. This this Toronto Blue Jays team doesn't steal bases, and that's when I did my bold prediction. I had Varsho. I mean, well, Varsho hitting thirty home runs obviously is probably not going to happen either now. But the the twenty stolen bases is what I was really worried about. I just didn't think with Varsho he would have uh, a chance to do much else. And clearly, I just should have stayed away from that bet. He still has time to turn it around, and we Lost really time. need him to turn it around. But uh, so far, not looking good on my uh, bold prediction there. 
So where do you think five stolen bases ranks in the entirety of the MLB? I, I want to say, I'm going to say 26 as well. 19. A little bit shocking okay. for me. Okay. That's, that I thought it was going to be lower. I thought it was going to be lower. I guess it seems like teams are getting away from the stolen bases a little bit. Obviously, you got your like your big players. You got Acuna who's going to steal maybe seventy bags this year. You got Bobby Witt, Corbin Carroll, all these guys, these really quick guys that are stealing bases a lot. But it's really team dependent. I find it's the not the Toronto Blue Jays style to steal bases because they don't want to get thrown on the base paths when they're barely getting on base anyway. Yeah. So I think that's part of the problem why we're probably low in the stolen bases is that. Uh, they're not walking a ton. They're not hitting a ton. So you don't want to throw away the minimal offense you're getting. But from a different perspective, from the other edge of the sword, if you're only getting a few guys on base, wouldn't you want these guys to get in scoring position? Because if you're only hitting singles, you're not going to be scoring on a single from first when you have a way better chance of scoring from second. Yeah, the duality, right? I mean, which side do you pick here? I don't know. Because I, I'm with the th- thought process. If you have quick guys on base, let them run. I mean, obviously, it depends on the team you're playing. It depends on the situation. Whatever, let them run. We got we got a pretty quick team outside of Vogelback, Kirk, you know, JT. Uh, get the don't don't let those guys on the base pass whatsoever. But the rest of them, they can run. Vladdy even in there. Vladdy's stolen a few bags, so he could he could get in there. Vladdy, um, I think, is actually like sneakily fast. Like he's not yeah. he's not like crazy quick, but he's faster than you'd probably think he would be. So I think that helps Vladdy out a little bit. But uh, I just wanted to get into some of the bullpen stats here quickly. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because uh, there's been a couple of guys that have been really, really good. And that's what I'm going to spend my time on. And a couple of guys that haven't been that good. If they've been kind of middle of the pack, I'm going to kind of let them ride it out. So first guy that I've noticed this season that has been unbelievable, in my opinion, is Jimmy Garcia. Like a huge yeah. back, bounce back season from him so far with a, uh, a guy that's had to be relied on a lot more, obviously, with Jordan Romano and Eric Swanson out to start the season. So, Jimmy Garcia, he has pitched five and two-thirds innings, given up two hits, only one earned run with an ERA of 1.59, eight strikeouts, and one walk. This is a guy that has been solely implanted in as our setup man while these guys have been out, a guy that's thrown 20-plus pitches multiple times already this year. And his velo has been spiking What from what I've seen. He hit 100 a couple times in his last outing. That's definitely something to see from Yumi Garcia. And he's looking definitely a lot closer to his 2022 form. Like I said on the last podcast, I think this guy kind of gets overlooked a little bit just based off how good this bullpen was last season. But I wanted to give a shout out to Yumi Garcia, especially right now when the Toronto Blue Jays bullpen is so depleted and they're having to rely on these guys so heavily. So shout out to Yumi Garcia for his start to the season. Yeah, good on him. Honest to God, like uh, we always talk about the Romano and the Swansons, you know, sort of outshining everybody else when now that they're not here as of right now, they will be this weekend, of course. Um, But as of right now, these guys haven't played. And so I think that that lets you see just how deep this bullpen is. And don't get me wrong, they look pretty depleted right now um, just because they've had to. They've had to throw a lot of innings. They've had to go in and out. Trevor Richards might have pitched a billion innings so far. He, he might be in every single game. Um, but he's a workhorse. These guys are workhorses. They've been doing their job. Don't get me wrong. They put a little bit of fear in my heart once in a while, but they get the job done. And so it's going to be just fantastic when uh, Swanee and uh, Romano come back. Yeah, for sure. I mean, when these guys have already been so productive, you're going to give them opportunities to pitch in lower leverage. If they've been productive in higher leverage, you got to expect them to be pretty good against the uh, the lower guys in the lineup. So again, I'm just going to kind of breeze over these two quickly, even though, actually, no, I'm, I'm going to give this guy's flowers because he has been good. Nate Pearson, five innings, five and two thirds innings, four hits given up, no earned runs from the kid. But the problem is you're looking at this bullpen. You're looking at its construction. Obviously, you have Romano and Swanson coming back. you can't, you got to give Chad Green a spot, Yumi Garcia, Trevor Richards, Tim Meza. You start listing people off. This bullpen starts losing spots very quickly. And Nate Pearson has options. Very likely, we see him getting sound, sent down in a corresponding move. But the thing with Nate Pearson is he did have a stint like this last season, somewhere in the middle of uh, the season there where he was throwing around a two ERA and looked very good for about 15 starts, then kind of fell off a cliff and looked horrible, was throwing middle, middle pitches, completely lost the command. So the thing with Nate Pearson, it's kind of like the riding the hot hand thing, like we've been saying on this podcast for so long. Is he's pitching good. You don't really want to switch things up. But again, when you have Eric Swanson and Jordan Romano over Nate Pearson, you probably have to take that. Yeah, yeah. And don't get me wrong, we're not saying that this is the move that is going to be made for sure in the sense that Bowden is going to go to the bullpen. 
there maybe Bowden goes down. I, I can't see that happening, but maybe that's what happens. Maybe this guy gets put down instead. Like we don't know a hundred percent for fact, but looking at the numbers, looking at the way things work, looking who's there, you got to be able to make an assumption. And and yeah, sadly, I don't know if Nate's going to stick around. Yeah, and well, that's looking like Paul Espinal. It, I mean, that one's pretty. Uh, I think uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> everyone's thinking that he's going to be sent down. It's yep. a pretty common opinion. Uh, I just want to quickly give a shout out to Trevor Richards again. Uh, workhorse, six two thirds innings, a two seven ERA. Uh, that changeup again with that thing is on. That is one of the most lethal pitches from any bullpen in the league, honestly. Like that thing moves like crazy. Chad Green again. I've already talked about him on the podcast, giving him his flowers. Our uh, our part time starter, temporary starter, doing a great job picking up save after save for this Toronto Blue Jays team giving them chances to stay in the game and ending games uh, in the absence of Jordan Romano. But the overall thing I want to get into. So you have Yariel Rodriguez coming up, probably going to be in that fifth starting rotation spot. But even if he's not, him or Bowden Francis, probably going to end up taking that long reliever role in the bullpen. Then you have Jordan Romano, Eric Swanson, probably coming back this weekend, if not early next week. So we've been saying there's not a lot of room in this bullpen. So Brandon, I was going to ask you, you got eight guys in the bullpen. You have Jordan Romano back, Aaron Swats, Eric Swanson back. You have everyone available, all reinforcements. Who are the eight guys you're taking? For this scenario, we will have Yariel Rodriguez as a starting pitcher. We'll give him that fifth spot. So, Baton Francis is an option for you in the bullpen. I mean, knock him off the list here. Romano, he's back. Swanner's back. Meets is staying in there. You need him. Uh, you know he has not been good this season. I no, but but you know you, that, you but. need you need a good throw on lefty, and I I know that Timmy can turn it up and and he'll get back to form. Uh, Chad Green got to keep in there. I've really liked what I've seen. Yimmy, you got to keep Yimmy in. Uh, that takes you to five, I believe. Yeah, Richards got to keep sticks. Richards in. Yeah. Uh, Cabrera, you got to keep in. So that, that leaves you Bowden, Mitch White, Paulo Espino, and Nate Pearson, I believe. Uh, okay, well, you got to have – you got to put Bowden back there. You can't send him down. You can't send him down now. I, I think Nate's deserved it. We've seen what he can do. He's done well. But can he keep that up? I don't know. I think Bowden, what, from what we saw last year, him coming out of the pen, I think you got to go him. I even though I think Nate looks good, I don't know what you do with Mitch White. I don't know what where that guy's role is now. Uh, it's it's going to be a tough decision, and I I'm sort of interested. For me personally, it's Bowden. I think you got to keep Bowden as of right now. But the person I'd like to see probably Nate at this second, just because of what we said about riding the hot hand. You brought it back up. Got to ride the hot hand. But I don't know if that's going to happen. Yeah, I think those first seven you said are pretty concrete. Those guys don't have options. Those are guys that have been productive for you last season. No reason to move on from them. As for Bowden Francis, Bowden Francis is the only guy that I actually don't know what his options are looking like. I don't know if they can send him back down. I don't think you want to anyway, because no. I think Bowden Francis is going to be way more productive for this MLB team than a guy like Mitch White, Paulo Espino, and Nate Pearson. So I know Mitch White does not have any options. So that is a pretty interesting situation there. If he gets DFA'd, he's probably getting picked up. But what other option do you have here? You have you give him the eighth spot. You if Bound Francis does have options, you send him down. I think that's kind of unjust considering how good he was in spring training, how good he was last season when he pitched, how good he was out of the bullpen last season. So I think Bound Francis would be the right man for the role of this long reliever. Fortunately, Nate Pearson, you got to be set back down. You have options. Again, it's only been six innings of pitch of you pitching. I think it's at five and a third is the actual number. But again, not a big sample size, so you can't take too much merit from that. And then Paulo Espinal, a guy that's just always going to be called on. If there is injuries, I think this is a black and white option to send him back down. So I just wanted to get into two guys quickly because they had said two guys that were good. I just wanted to quickly go over two guys that have not been good. And that is Tim Meza and Henny Cabrera, both guys over 12 ERAs, guys that are not locating to start the year, throwing a lot of meatballs to say the least. Tim Meza obviously pitched in that last game against the Seattle Mariners. And the Jays killer, Cal Rowley, makes him pay and hits a home run into the right field. Tim Meza, a guy that last year I was not high on at all. I did not like Tim Meza going into last season. But I watched him all last season. I watched him dominate. I watched him in 2022 be pretty good as well. 2021, he was good. 
So I kind of jumped on the Tim Meza train, but then unfortunately we got some uh, some bad starts from Tim Meza. A little bit unfortunate. A guy I'm not as worried about, I'd say. Henny Cabrera I'm probably more worried about because, again, this guy uh, is has a lot less consistency in his career. Just we get, got DFA'd from the Cardinals last season. That's how we got him. So that's, I mean, part of the reason why I'm a little bit worried about him. Looked unbelievable when he played for the Toronto Blue Jays. But a 12 ERA to start season, not something you're really looking uh, looking for, for sure. But again, he is pitching in higher leverage than he usually would be with Jordan Romano and Eric Swanson being out. So I think we can expect these numbers definitely to go down. Can we expect Henny Cabrera to have the same year as last season? I think we'd probably be a little bit foolish to think that, but I think this bullpen is going to be more than fine with all the weapons we have. Yeah, I'm with you. I think I think Tim, I have way more faith in than Cabrera, but I, neither of these guys are getting moved. I it has to be it has to be Nate that goes down. Bowden's going to come into the pen. Uh, Pablo Espino, I think we all know that he's not staying up. He's been serviceable uh, when he's played. I have no problem with Espino. It's just uh, the options. I mean, it's, it's a pretty obvious answer here. Yeah, yeah. And so at, at the end of the day, I mean, it's pretty black and white. I think everybody that watches this team on the regular pr- probably has pretty close to the same outcome that me and you did. Um, we do want to get into our season preview because we got to make our picks because I took a huge lead after this last series on Carter. You took and I will continue. Whatever. I will continue to take more leads on Carter. I promise Here. that to all the fans out there. I will just, not let uh, this go by the wayside. Just before we do get into that, though, we do have our Lost National 24-7 streaming channel. One of the best times of the year to be a sports fan. Always have the option to check out our expert opinions over on our Locked On Sports Today channel 24-7. So you can tune in at any time. Let's go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe. So after this, we're just going to head into our Rockies preview what our predictions are, how our predictions have been. Obviously, Braden's pretty excited that he is up on me finally in uh, his predictions after taking a tough loss in NHL Fantasy. So we'll get into all that after Come this. on. That's criminal. Today's episode, of course, brought to you by FanDuel. I love FanDuel. I'm a big supporter. Well, I don't know if you can say supporter. It might be a donation. I don't know you're, what you're it is. You're a big funder, to say the least. I, yeah, I fund them pretty much. Um, it's playoff time in the NBA, NHL, and baseball is in full swing. And FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets. That's guaranteed. Carter, and we keep saying we're going to get you on there. We're getting you on FanDuel because if you don't use $150 in bonus bets, I'll use it. I could use it. I could use the help. That's $150 in bonus bets. Bonus box, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks. Bet on the the Vladdy home run. Bet on it. Bet on it. Bet on it. I'm riding it. Until he hits. Until he doesn't hit one, I'm going to be riding it. That might be one game. It might be 10. I don't know. <laughs> All on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Are you struggling to close deals? Selling is tougher than ever, and that's why I want to tell you about LinkedIn Sales Navigator. LinkedIn Sales Navigator is a sales intelligence platform that helps professionals effectively prospect and engage high-value customers, drive higher revenue, and increase sales performance. Right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get a 60-day free trial at linkedin.com slash locked on. That is linkedin.com slash locked on for a 60-day free trial. Let LinkedIn Sales Navigator help you sell like a superstar today. Go to linkedin.com slash locked on to get started. I'm not going to lie. I use LinkedIn all the time. I uh, I actually, it helped me get the job I have now. Not this one, not, not, not locked on. I mean, like my, my job job, you know, this is, this is more of a fun thing to be honest with you. I'm just, I just love talking Blue Jays and they gave me an outlet to do it. And here I am. And then I said, Hey Carter, you love talking about Blue Jays. You want to talk about Blue Jays? He said, yeah, I'll talk about Blue Jays. Okay. Anyway, serious prediction, Carter. I'm up by a ton. Maybe not a ton. What am I up? Eight, six? You're up, you're up two points. You did get the hey. first series sweep, actually, of the year. You got that series exactly right. You got predicted the loss as well. I got the series right, but I had the loss mixed up. I had Chris Bassett losing instead of the game three loss. So Braden is up eight to six. But uh, we're moving on to a Colorado Rocky series that, for me, 
I have. I know what the Jays are going to do. I feel like I know what the series is going to be. I have no idea which games they're going to win. I'm not, I'm not going to be honest. I really wanted to go for a sweep here, yeah. but uh, I, I don't think I can. But I'm going to let you read off the pitching matchups to start. Okay, game one. Kevin Gosman versus Feltner. Game two, Hudson versus was supposed to be Bowden Francis. We'll see what happens. This might be a Yariel Rodriguez start. Undisclosed, I guess you could say right now. Undisclosed. And then it's Freeland versus Barrios. Barrios, whatever. Uh, Carter, I'm not going to lie to you. I was hoping for a sweep here, but I think I'm going to go 2-1 as well. Uh, Yeah. Sadly. Which uh, which game do you have the Blue Jays losing here? I'm still thinking about it right now. I Actually, as I'm speaking about this, I don't even have it picked out, and I'm not going to lie. I have one that I think is going to happen, but uh, recently in the, with the way the Toronto Blue Jays operate is usually they don't have great performances in the pitching matchups that you expect them to win. So yeah. I'll let you start with uh, your prediction here. Well, Gosman's got to have a bounce back. I think it just has to be. That's what the world intends. So I'm going Gosman win. Then if, if it's Bowden, it might not be the best performance. Maybe the Blue Jays get the light. If it's Yariel, I think maybe he has a really good start, but the Blue Jays don't back him up enough, and they lose that game. And then I'm going a Barrios win as well. See, that's that's what I was leading towards doing, and I don't want to match you because I got to gain points somehow. I'm, I'm on the Blue Jays board. I'm going sweep now. I'm uh, I'm going okay. for it. The Toronto Blue Jays get the sweep. They get the pitching they need. I agree. Kevin Gosman, Barrios, for me, I, I know exactly what they're going to give this team. When you're looking at this Toronto Ro- or Toronto Rockies, Colorado Rockies starting Indeed. rotation with Ryan Feltner, that's probably the best pitcher we have this weekend, maybe, and that's not great. <laughs> so this is definitely a huge series for the Toronto Blue Jays, a huge momentum, I guess, keeper you could say, keep like, moment, staying the momentum in the Toronto Blue Jays uh, direction here. I think a two out of three series definitely does that. But if you can sweep this series, get over the 500 mark, I think that is huge for this team. The game I'm definitely the most worried about is that Bowden Francis, Yariel Rodriguez start. Because, again, this, this lineup isn't good I, I'm in the Rockies. They got Nolan Jones. They got uh, Ezekiel Tobar, who is a good and upcoming prospect. A guy that has shown it at the major league level last season. But, again, not a big power hitter. Charlie Blackman's still there. Chris Bryant's skeleton is still there, I guess. Jesus, uh, come on. <laughs> Give I, the guy a break. I didn't even know he was actually on the Rockies until I looked at this lineup. I, I kind of completely forgot about that guy as soon as he left the uh, Chicago Cubs. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I got a sweep. I got the Toronto Blue Jays continuing their momentum. Hopefully, Yariel Rodriguez or Bound Francis, whoever is slated in that, can uh, give the Blue Jays just a chance to win. I'm uh, predicting with these pitchers, the offense has a little bit of a revival this series. We got to get over the hump. We get over the 500 mark, and we are – I guess we're what, we're five and six right now. No, it'd be six and seven right now. So that would take us to nine and seven. Huge series with Toronto Blue Jays. That could be huge. I, I love it. Honestly, if I could ride it, I would. But, you know, like you said, I got to try to keep and, you know, gain some more momentum for myself here in our uh, little battle. Uh, no, it's, it's going to be a very interesting series. I'm very excited. I just want the Blue Jays to score a million runs. That's all I want to see. The pitching, we know what we're getting. Just please, 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 God score a million runs so I can have a great weekend of the opening weekend for golf, some Blue Jays baseball. There's a lot going on, Carter. I'm just what a, what a weekend, hey? What I mean, a weekend. You, you, get a, you get a weekend series, Colorado Rockies come to Toronto. We get our golf back. Probably indulge in some beverages this weekend. We'll see what happens. Canucks game tomorrow. I mean, this, this weekend as a sports fan, uh, just a sports uh, enthusiast in general, couldn't get any better. Yeah, there might be one or two beverages consumed. I don't know about any more than that. Maybe one, maybe two. I'll, uh, maybe I'll cap it out at two. I don't want to get waters, too crazy. And a ton of iced teas. That's it. Yep, yep. Some Dr Pepper or some Mountain Dew. What did that kid say on the uh, Dr the... Pepper? You were you yeah. respond. You had doc- a case of Dr Pepper that one time. I think you had a back to back on a podcast or something. And that kid was uh, not letting you live it down, to say the least. No, <laughs> who's the kid in the Olympics video who goes, "You, you're, you're not old enough to drink." What do you mean? He goes, "Mountain Dew, baby." Or whatever he says. I, you know, no oh, you've never seen that? Okay. Honestly. Might that might be one of those things that's like over the head. I don't know. Yeah, that might com- be a very comment, niche uh, video. Leave, leave a comment in the comment section if you know what Braden's talking about. Or uh maybe leave some like pitchforks or something if he's just being ridiculous like he normally is. Uh that that's the typical Braden Owasco experience that I am used to to say the least. I just want to <laughs> say thank you guys for watching. What uh, an episode the, this was. The the support, likes, comments, all the dis- debates, discussions we have are always appreciated. 
Uh, we have been posting pretty actively on uh, our Twitters, to say the least. I'm definitely uh, reacting mid uh, mid Jays game pretty much every time I have the opportunity to watch. So that's Carter first two, Braden five, Owasco. He's pretty active as well. TikTok, we, uh, that's locked on Blue Jays. Instagram, same thing. We're trying to get more active on there uh, with the off day. Maybe uh, we'll post a TikTok tomorrow uh, for the, the weekend series. But, uh, Brayden, you got anything else to add? I actually have one other thing to add before <laughs> I give it back to you. Thanks you want me to leave? On. You want me to leave the room? Yeah, kind of, actually. Yeah, like, okay. Uh, yeah, see you later. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Fine. you want, I'll, I'll give it to you here. You can tell the, the people about the Locked On 24-7 streaming channel. I'm already gone. Okay, I'll, I'll take it over then. So we got, we got uh, the 24-7 streaming channel, obviously basketball, football, college sports. Anything you guys could ask for is over there. So just tune in to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national 24-7 streaming channel. I don't know about you guys, but I could definitely get used to this, having some peace and quiet on this podcast once in a while, some more well-thought-out, concise takes. Definitely could be nice to have on this podcast, but always yeah, appreciate you guys watching. Uh, likes, comments, subscriptions, always appreciated. We have noticed that about 70% of you guys aren't subscribed. It is getting better as we have been hammering that into you guys. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Braden is back. I was going to throw it to him, but I think you guys uh, are like me, and hopefully we don't hear too much about him uh, this weekend. So uh, you guys enjoy your weekend. Be safe. Don't be idiots. And we will see you guys on Monday.